Here I am at the Artist Project 2020 and I'm going to interview some OSA members, Ontario Society of Artists. This year, I would find something that was similar to the umbrellas, and I liked the idea of the Halloween candy, or the penny candy series, as I call it. So this is my penny candy series. And it looks like umbrellas to me. Like the suckers on, the, on this one over here kind of looks like my umbrella paintings. And the drawback to painting candy, though, is that I was eating too much candy. So I started painting some shoes, too. And watercolor can be a challenging, uh, depending medium, but I like that. So I paint a little every day, and uh, the medium is exciting, and it, it can be forgiving, but it's demanding. And it has a reputation for being hard, but it's worth trying. I create probably uh, for two reasons. One is totally selfish. It's... Uh, I do it because creating art for me is like breathing. I just cannot exist without it. And another reason I, through my art, I want uh, people to feel hope, to feel beauty of the world, like to give them reminders that uh, with all the complexity of what's going on today, there is still beauty that of nature, of human relationships that uh, will hopefully let us help to get through the difficult times. Why do you create? Because it's my life. That's my uh, interpretation of this world. That's my um, connection with the world. So, for example, this collection, what you see, I call this theme of that collection Reflections. The reflection always um, impressed me and interested me since I was a child. When we become mature, we see a reflection of yourself into eyes of other people. Creating is just something, it's just part of who I am. So I'm always thinking about different ideas, I'm always coming up with different concepts and I just always want to kind of get in there and make stuff. start off on wooden panels. I draw the outline of the image, I work that out. I then paint the background with black. This is all encaustic, by the way, so it's all wax. So I'm painting with hot melted wax that's kept at a constant temperature to keep it liquid. I paint the background black around the figure. I melt that so it gets smooth. I then transfer the gold pattern on top of it with gold leaf, scrape all the excess gold off, remelt the black to get rid of the scratch marks, but doing it so that it doesn't disturb the line. And then I paint the image, one brush stroke after the next, which dries immediately, so nothing is blended on the surface. It's all layered and glazed, and that's where all the texture comes from. For me, it was never a question because this is what I do. This is, life is about balance. So for me, there's always a balance between healthy living, between people, between work, and then art comes into that balance for me. So I've always painted, and if I didn't paint, there, my life would be out of balance. I like to go and see where I'm painting. I, like in the winter time, I do a lot of cross country skiing and snowshoeing, and I go through the forest, and I'm just you know looking for shapes and patterns. That's what really interests me. I can usually tell if I really. I'm proud of what I've done. Um, is I will often feel like I want to dance. I know it sounds kind of funny, but um, I really I listen to music when I paint, and I get really energized. You look beautiful. Do I need makeup? No. It's always it's been a passion since I discovered I could draw and enjoy it. In grade ten, grade ten art teacher. I'll uh, I'll credit with that. And um, it's just developed over the years, something I've always done. Now I'm in a position to absolutely paint full time. But I've been painting professionally now for oh, well over 30 years. And uh, doing shows like this and just getting my work out in front of people. So it's, it's something I'm always going to do. This is, what can you say? I mean, this is what you do as an artist. I really like working with the color pencil on the wood. Um, it's a unique medium. An interesting subject matter, it's very challenging and it's never the same. I love florals and polka dots and stripes, um, different um, patterns
terms of uh, lace, because I also work with um, like lingerie and uh, delicate garments, um, the work's very feminine, um, very graphic. I create my art because I'm interested in creating different shapes and forms that give me an experience and a satisfaction. And I hope the viewer gets a similar self-experience from their work. Uh, some earlier studies I did in uh, using uh, visual programming language where I was playing with shapes and forms in space and that had continued into my abstract art uh, to generate more complex shapes and forms which I then applied my interest in colour theory on top of. Well this is a kind of experimental piece for me and I've been doing a lot of paintings of trees um, but I just sort of felt that the idea of the wood and the, the idea that the subject is trees really marries itself really well together. And I like the kind of organic look rather than the painting on canvas. I created my art because I meant to. I knew that a long time ago, from, from quite a young age. And it's a calling that I will not resist. It is in my soul, it's in my blood. I see inspiration everywhere and I have to react to it. It's really important to just keep taking workshops with a variety of other people. Um, part is that you like the work, obviously. Um, and I would say never throw in a painting, just keep working through it um, until you re resolved all the issues with it and you'll shorten your learning curve. And then, of course, after that, you'll be ready to apply to different venues. Advice for emerging artists, uh, I think I'd have to say um, practice as cliche as that sounds. Uh, you do get better over time and the more that you are drawing or painting or working on the medium that you, you love, uh, the better you're going to get. And uh, try and create a cohesive body of work because that really helps when you start applying to shows. And uh, be prepared to get rejected. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a fact that it's going to happen, but don't let it... Um, you. Go out and visit a lot of galleries and a lot of shows and understand what really interests you in your work and what it is you want to explore. Because I go from exploring one in one series of paintings ideas into an, the next series, so my work is always progressing. Everybody has influences, everybody looks at somebody's art, whether it's Monet or Andy Warhol, and says, I want to be that person. But they're never going to be that person, but they're going to have to find what is about their art that they want to also make and make it their own. This is one field in life when you can be yourself. No need to be as society expects from you, as a parent expects from you, as your spouse expects from you. Just allow yourself to be yourself. For young emerging artists, I suggest you get a job in the hospitality industry. Uh, preferably a, on the dining room floor of a, a lovely hotel or something where you can get, make good money. You can pursue your craft during the day, you can work a non-stressful job at night, make good money and do that until you can full-time launch into your artistic career. Barring that, you can be a teacher. <laughs> Great advice. If you want to advance your practice, you need to get in there and you need to work. And that's really the only thing there is to it. Like, make the work, talk about the work, network, um, put it on social media, start doing small outdoor shows that are comfortable. But if you're not willing to get in there and do the work, then you're, you're, it's not going to work for you. So, I guess I, I think one of the most important things for uh, an emerging artist is to uh, set up your structure. You know, there's the rule of thirds and where you would put your highlight. If I were to give some guidance, it would be let it come from here. We are, of course, we're all influenced by what's going on around us. Don't look for your style, don't look for your voice, let it out.